Hello everybody, welcome to the homestead. So today we're gonna to do something different. We haven't done this in a while, but we've done a lot of it in the past, and that's make wine. And so right there, I've got about four gallons of wine. And right there is John. He came over today to help out. He's my gonna be my partner in crime today. Over there is Jamie, say hi. <laughs> and so we're all gonna see if we can get this wine uh, bottled up today. Um, I've got the bottle tree out right there, you can see. Um, I got a number of disinfectants, some brushes uh, to make sure everything stays clean. This will be the first time, the first time ever. Well, actually, no, the persimmons was the first time. I gathered fruit from persimmons. So this is the first time ever doing grapes. Grapes that we harvested by hand ourselves, crushed with my own feet, didn't do that with the persimmons, and then fermented for, let's see, we gathered these in the summer, late summer, August, 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 right? August. August. Also, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So about 10 months. 10 months these have been fermenting and we haven't tasted it yet. I tasted it about four or five months ago and it tasted pretty good. Um, it tasted the way it was supposed to be. So we're gonna do a taste on this in a little bit and then we'll, that'll tell us if we need to go ahead and continue to bottle it. Because if it doesn't taste good, if it's been ruined somehow, uh, then we'll just throw it out. The biggest thing when making wine that you have to remember is cleanliness. If things, things need to be disinfected, the best way you can disinfect everything is by boiling water. You can use chemicals. The only chemical I usually use is star sands. Um, but uh, for the most part, boiling water. That's how the ancients used to make wine. Wine making has been around for thousands of years. The way they made everything clean was boiling water because they didn't have soaps, they didn't have chemicals. Um, so boiling water was the way everyone can make fire. So if you can make fire and you have water, you can boil it. And that's how they used to clean everything. So we're gonna see if that turned out good. It looks okay, it tasted okay a few months back, but we'll go ahead and do dishes. We have to disinfect everything and then we'll get started with that process. So stick around. So I'm looking through some of our old wine bottles and remembering that was a good bottle. I enjoyed that one. Um, this, a lot of my friends drink this. I can't stand it. It's like, I wouldn't even call that wine. Um, I think we got this from some friends who came over for a camp out in Sukkot. 5% by alcohol. What? It's pointless to drink it even. So I don't, I don't get this, but... The Woodsons, the Wells, I think you guys love this stuff if they're watching. I don't like it, but we're going to fill it with some good wine, so all is not lost with that bottle. <laughs> Over here we've got, I know I always get in trouble for that wine, but because um, it's not wine. That's not wine. Um, anyway, uh, this is uh, our corker. It's the Ferrari. You can, there's two types of floor corkers you'll find online mostly. Uh, one's called the Portuguese model, one's called the, the Ferrari Italian model. Um, and so we do own a Ferrari here on the homestead. And so um, you put the cork inside there and then you close it down. It squeezes the cork and then presses it into the bottle just like that. So you can see, you can see how that goes up and down like that and just pushes it through into the bottle. And you put the bottle obviously on the pad. And so uh, we used to have one of those hand corkers that could not stand it. It just gave me all kinds of fuss. And so when I moved to this, this was just amazing. Watching that made this apron. Um, so, so she's uh, washing some of the bottles, and she says that someone made her this apron and sent it to her. Um, Janelle. 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 Um, Tor Torgerson. Torgerson. Yeah. Thanks, Janelle. She looks really pretty in her uh, <laughs> in her apron. So we're gonna clean these bottles with this right here. It's called the bottle washer, and um, it's specially made for wine bottles. And you put it inside of a drill. Uh, it goes inside the drill, you fill the bottle with soapy water, and then put this inside and scrub. And hopefully that will disinfect. And then we'll take it and use this, it's kind of a part right now, but we'll use some star sands. It's the only chemical I ever use when I make wine um, to coat the inside of the bottle with a little bit of disinfected from that. And then the bottle is ready to be filled with wine. And then we'll open this thing up and see if all this time has paid off.
Okay, so we got the bottle, tr bottle tree all filled up and we're gonna go ahead and crack open this carboy and do a taste test and see how it turned out. First is the smell test. Oh, it smells good. You want to smell it real quick? Yeah. Oh yeah. It smells good? It smells real good. <laughs> All right. Woo, boy. If it smells as good as it, if it tastes as good as it smells, we're, we're going to be in good shape. Yeah, that's okay. It's dry. That's all right. It's all right. All right. So that's what it, it's called a young wine. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. It's not bad. That will mellow out right. in, in the bottle after time. Yeah, that's good. There's, no, there's nothing bad in there. There's a Chris Haas is very famous for making horrible wines. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right, that's good. It, it, that, that's okay. It's, it's going to have a little bit of a bite to it when it's brand new and young. And so that'll mellow after it ages in the bottle. You know how wine, they say wine gets better in the bottle over time. That's where it, why it gets better. It's because it's a young wine. It's going to have a bite to it. It's almost deceptive. So this is a Concord grape. Concord grapes are usually known for sweet wines. So most of the grape juice you buy in the store is a Concord if it's, if it's the red grape. It's a Concord grape. And so when you bring this up to your nose, your nose instantly smells the sweetness. But when you taste it, the sweetness is gone because all real wines are dry wines. The only reason you have sweet wines today is because people use chemicals to stop the fermentation and then usually add sugar back into the wine. True wines that were made back in the ancient times they basically filled the wines into animal skins and it fermented until it was done. And then the animal skin would begin to collapse. And that's how they knew the wine was finished. But by then, all the sugars are gone out of the wine. And then the wine was stored into wooden, wooden uh, barrels or where, however they clayed pots or however they were going to store it. But it's kind of deceptive, the Concord being a dry wine because your nose tells you it's sweet when in reality, when you taste it, there's no sugar there. Okay, so we're back and we've got all these wine bottles filled. Uh, it's kind of hard to film this really well when you, you need a lot of hands to make sure you spill as little as possible and there's definitely a little bit of spillage here. Uh, but we filled all the bottles plus that last one with about a fourth. So uh, that's a good amount of wine. Uh, these two bottles, these three bottles, one, two, three, are two bottles. I forget what they call those, magnum bottles? I'm not sure, but there's two bottles worth in each bottle. And so we filled all those. Um, you can see all of the oak staves. This, I mean, when you're tasting this, and I can taste it, um, you can taste the oak. This sat, the wine, after I had racked it twice, the remaining wine sat in this carboy with that charred oak for about four months, four or five months. And that really does an amazing thing for the flavor. Uh, so what I tell you to do, what I would recommend any, anyone to do if they're going to make this from home, uh, is to get these oak staves. They're white oak. White oak. You gotta use white oak. Very important. You use white oak. Uh, do a quick char on them with any like propane torch or whatever. Just a, a mild char, and then put them into your uh, carboy after you've racked it, and then let it sit for a good five, six months or so. And then it's gonna really impact the flavor. You're gonna get the tannins that give it a, a little bit of vanilla, um, just maybe some caramel flavor. Um, it's just hints of flavor that this adds. It makes it makes a difference. 
you know, if you want wine that has that store-bought feel and taste after it's been in a bottle for six months to a year, the oak is the key. All right, so now the corks are in boiling hot water. We just pulled this off the stove, and it's just a last-ditch effort for a disinfectant uh, before you put it into the bottle. Everything that touches that wine needs to be disinfected. And so you don't use, need to use any chemicals. Boiling water works fine. But you just stick them in there just quickly. Now they're ready to go. Easy peasy. This is really simple. Put the bottle on the pad. Line it up. It's good to go. Take a cork that's been disinfected. Drop it in. It's going to squeeze the cork and push it right down into the bottle. And a perfect seating. See that? Easy. Yeah, I want to emphasize... It's really, really important to make sure your wine is done fermenting before you put the corks in your bottle. Because if your wine is still young and it's still bubbling in your carboy and you put it in a bottle, you have now a live bomb that will go off at some point and make a gigantic mess. It's never happened to me before, but it has happened to friends of mine. So I'm just saying that when you cork your wine, make sure your wine is completely done. There you go folks about 21 bottles of concord grape dry wine okay this is not the concord grape wine that you may be used to if it's alcoholic most concord grape wines are sweet uh, so just so you understand all real wines are dry wines okay the reason is because the yeast eats the sugar and when it's finished eating all of the sugar then it stops it stops fermenting by that time, it's not sweet anymore. The only way you get sweet wines is if you go ahead and add sugar back into the wine after it's done. And then you have to put a chemical or some sort of other additive, whether it's natural or not natural, to make sure that any yeast left in the wine does not eat the new sugar you just put it back in it to make it sweet. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but real wine, traditional wine, the wine that the, that the ancients drank was all dry wine. And so we got about 21 bottles here. I got a little bit of bottle, a little bit of wine left, and uh, that I put in this bottle here, and uh, got it in a glass. And it's a little bit cloudy because it's got sediment in, in it because was, this is was the last of the barrel, and so um, it's got a little bit of sediment in it. But it smells super sweet, and it fools you because it's that Concord sweet smell. But when you drink it, yeah, it's the dry wine. It's really good. Now this is a new wine. So new wines will have a little bit of a bite to it. It's not really bitter, but it's just a bite. It's just, they call it new wine or some people label it as aggressive because uh, there's still, it needs to calm down. And so that is why we get the saying that, um, you know, it ages like a nice wine because the more a wine ages, the more it calms down, that 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 sharpness. It's almost like a, a, a cheddar cheese sharpness. You know, you ever t taste a, a, a sharp tasted a sharp cheddar cheese? It's the same thing. It, it's it's kind of sharp, and so once it ages, that goes away, and that sharpness goes away. It mellows. Uh, so this wine will you can drink it at six months, but it'd probably be best to wait a year. And then at that point, it's good. You can kind of do it whenever you want. Uh, open it up and, and it'll be really nice. So um, just so you know, this is a, a new wine. It's going to have that little bit of a sharpness whenever you make wine. Now, I want to warn you about something. If you're into wines and you like wines, there is a lot of advertising on places like Facebook, social media, Twitter, um, you know, where they try to push wine clubs on you. And I, I've been a member of about three different wine clubs over the years. And uh, it seems like a lot of the wine clubs today, what they're doing is they're packing up a half a case or a case of wines to send you when you join the wine club. And they usually try to hook you in with a really cheap price at first. And the wines that you get are only like last year's vintage. 
that's when you know something's wrong because it has to age. Uh, you know, a lot of wines, they wouldn't even go into the market unless they were two years old. They wouldn't even be released into the public until they were like a, had a two-year-old date on the bottle because a good wine needs to age at least a year. And so they're just coming off with like last year's vintage and it just turned, you know, last, you know, from last year, like I, I ordered one at the beginning of the year. It was like a half case, six bottles. And it was like January of 2019 and they were giving me 2018 wines. <laughs> I was like, what, how do they do that? And, and if you taste the wine, it tastes, doesn't taste bad. It doesn't have the sharpness that a new wine has. Well, how do they do that? So a, a few months back, my wife ordered a book called Cork Dork. And we read it from the local library, and it was a New York Times bestseller. And in that book, it talked about all of the additives, all of the chemicals, all of the um, unnatural flavorings that they put into wine and things that they do to new wine to make it taste like an aged old wine. Because that's what people want. They want that, that, that mellow, mature taste that a, an older wine brings. And if, if, if a, you're a corporation... All you're carry, all you're worried about is the bottom dollar, how much money you can make, how much money you can make, how fast you can get product to market, and how much money you can save along the way. And so, a lot of these big corporations are trying to push a lot of product out to the market as quick as possible, and they they send they have they spend a lot of money on laboratories on trying different things to make their their wine taste like an old aged mature wine. And so that's what you're getting with most of these wine clubs, you're getting a lot of unnatural uh, additives and flavorings that aren't natural at all. And it's just, it tastes, it tastes pretty good. You know, you wouldn't notice a difference, but it's last year's wine. It's last year's vintage. So if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. It's the same thing with everything. Animals, a lot of the meat that you buy in the store, a lot of the food you buy in the store, it's all processed. You don't even know what, what is real anymore today. Um, and it's the same with wine, real good wine, natural wine is going to take a while for you to be able to drink. You got to keep it clean. You got to keep it disinfected when you make it the whole lot, because any type of bacteria gets into that wine, it can ruin it. And so at the end, you're going to have a sharp wine, a wine that you're not normally going to find in stores or restaurants. Okay. Because it hasn't aged yet. Once you put it through about six months, a year's worth of resting, you know, put it on its side. Okay, I got a wine the other day. Um, I opened up a wine bottle. This was a store bought b- a bottle, and um, they you could tell they had stored it like this all the time they had had it. And then they shipped it out. And when I got it, you know, I I always put them on their side because I figure you know they're putting them on their sides, but they're not. And I opened up the label around around the top, and it was leaking. It had it had started to to leak a little bit, meaning that it had been stored for the most of its life upright like this. You never know what you're going to get at the stores today. People don't take into account quality and craftsmanship anymore into anything. And so, you know, when I get my bottles, you know, all my bottles that I did today, you saw me on the video, they're all laying down. They're either up there on the wine rack or they're in the back, you know, laying down. So that's where they're going to be for the next six months to a year, probably a year. I'm going to wait probably a year. And so this summer, the end of the summer, we're going to go back to the vineyard. We're going to harvest a whole new crop of Concord grapes, probably more than I did last time, and then uh, put those into bottles, and and then those will rest a year. And so by the time those are finished, you know, or those are done fermenting and going into bottles, I'll probably then be opening these bottles up or close to it, maybe a few months away. So... Man, that's how you make good wine. All right, guys. Hope this video has been informative. I hope you enjoyed the process. Go ahead. Try it yourself. Listen, this is more challenging. What we're doing is challenging. Most people go to the store, they buy a kit, and that's all they do. They buy a kit, and it's almost foolproof to make the wine. If you're going to harvest the fruit yourself, if you're going to start from fin- start to finish, do it all on your own, it's a bit of a challenge, but you can do it. It just takes a few simple rules to be followed. I have a video. It's called uh, the different steps that you can you can follow to make good wine. I'll post that up on the cards up here, and you can watch that video. It's also in the link in the description below. Uh, watch that video if you're interested in making wine your own. You follow those steps, and you're going to make a good wine from start to finish, even if you harvest the fruit yourself. 
If you just want to get your feet wet in this in this process and just see how it goes, go to the store, buy a kit. Uh, they're about a hundred bucks for a good kit, and you know you'll make a lot of wine with that. Uh, usually six gallons, uh, five bottles per gallon. That's about thirty bottles. So you know if you want to make thirty bottles of wine, you'll spend you know a hundred dollars for a kit, and they'll give you everything included. That it's it's almost idiot proof. You can't mess it up, and you'll you'll have good wine. But if you want to do it the old fashioned way. You know, <laughs> this is how you do it. Just keep it. Watch that video on all the steps that you can take to, to make sure it turns out right. Okay, leave it at that. Um, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Appreciate it. See you next time in the homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait.